one key thing about Brexit that you really have to know was one of the driving forces behind sort of you know British Euroscepticism was the fact of regulations. Most of the certainly the key leading Brexiteers in well the whole Brexit argument are free market fundamentalists. They are libertarians. They are libertarians at heart, meaning that they want absolutely no, no regulation whatsoever. And we've discussed, when we've been discussing the EU um, sort of re retention bill, or sort of the e the EU revocation retention whatever bill but I say we'll just make it simple and just call it the uh, EU regulation bill because <laughs> I think it's easier to people to understand what we're talking about then so Jacob Rees Mogg's entire plan with this EU regulation bill was to go I want to get rid of as much regulation as I possibly can and I want to get rid of it as quickly as possible and to this extent it was originally about 2,000 pieces of legislation that were going to go. But of course, as people pointed out, this expanded to over 4,000 that this bill would potentially apply to, which was not taken into account in the original writing of this bill. This bill was written with the exact express purpose to destroy as much regulation as possible. That was the main intention of this bill, to a point where you even have people who were Brexiteers, when they saw this bill, going, um, what is this? This is, a, this is a disaster of a bill. And we've got, hopefully, Rishi Sunak is going to kill this bill. Certainly the Lords are going to put in a lot of amendments and potentially even write out the timeline and the deadline that Reese mogg wanted, this sunset clause in, uh, especially more so. Um, they're going to tear it out and then it's going to go back to the back to the Commons. And then it's a question of, does Rishi Sunak actually continue with this bill or not? Does he have the wiggle room to, to just drop it? Uh, we don't know. We'll have to see, as we said, how this all plays out. But interestingly enough, you may see we're going to the Conservative home. Because, as we've said before, Conservative home, quite influential when it comes to sort of the minds and the um, influence it has, shall we say, on the Conservative Party membership. So the fact that they've got a piece here, which we'll be going over, trying to sort of reassure people that, oh, don't worry, guys this bill's coming. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to get rid of this EU uh, regulation one way or another. Uh, it just might take some time, but don't worry, we're going to get rid of it. But there's some other stuff in this that I, I very much disagree with. Some points he does make, I'll, I'll give him, I'll give, you know, the right, I think it's Will Ashton, is it Will Ashton? No, Will Atkinson, that's it. Will William Atkinson, uh, who wrote this, I will give him this. He does make a point that we've made before that sometimes if you get rid of these, this is going to cause a big problem. A big problem just getting rid of regulations for, well, getting rid of its sake. But like I say, we'll get into those uh, when we come to them in the article. So as always, guys, uh, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and of course, my uh, uh, one of donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. There's the YouTube thank you button as well down below. There's also the Pony Club as well you can join. And of course, remember to ring the bell so that you get notifications of when we go live or when we uh, drop a new video on the channel. So as always, guys, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel. Even if you do, just hit the like and share button. And of course, remember to leave a comment down below as well. That always helps with the algorithmical stuff as well. So as always, on to this from Conservative of Home, the title of the EU Regulation Bill. There's a trade-off between time and content. And the best solution is a pause to mull what needs to change and how. Interesting 
he's already admitting that there needs to be a pause. That's the that's the interesting admission almost straight away, even in the in the title, that there needs to be a pause. Everyone recognizes that this sunset clause, which Re Jacob Rees Mogg insists should be in there. He, you know, <laughs> um, says no, that shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be the case. So, on with this. So, Jacob Rees-Mogg makes an unlikely fairy godmother. Nevertheless, the retained EU law bill, which he was the driving force behind, has something in common with Cinderella's magic patron. It's a very weird, very weird uh, uh, analogy, but there you go. Um, I wouldn't agree. I'd, I'd agree that more that it's Jacob Rees Mogg saying that he's uh, bought a house. He likes the house, but he doesn't like the foundations. So he's going to rip out the foundations, but keep the rest of the house. I think that's a more an, you know, accurate analogy. But there you go. Just as Cinderella's ball gown and pumpkin carriage would disappear at the stroke of midnight, the bill aims to ensure that any of around 4,000 EU laws will not have been renewed or repealed by the end of 2023, would spontaneously expire. Except it wasn't 4,000. It was 2,000. The 4,000 number comes from the extra laws that people looked into this found. And they still say that there are potentially even more out there this would affect. This is why that sort of that sunset clause is so dangerous and the chaos that it will cause so and yet one of the true uh and yet like the one true uh of the handsome prince the legislation could come a cropper at the hands of its very own ugly sisters or the house of lords uh to you or me a senior government source has told the Financial Times that it was, quote, inevitable that Rishi Sunak would be forced to abandon the timetable by peers. Good, because that timetable is ridiculous. The Prime Minister uh, may have committed to, quote, reviewing and retaining every EU law during last summer's leadership race, and the official line remains that, quote, there are no plans to change the sunset deadline. And yet, a Disney ending does not seem to be anywhere in sight. And this is not going to be a, a, a Disney ending. This is going to be like the ending to Hostel. Um, by the way, don't. If you've never seen Hostel, uh, don't go look up the ending. Um, like I say, it's a, it's a pretty sort of grim, gritty horror movie. If you have seen the ending to Hostel, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, um, certainly this is going to be no... Uh, Disney movie ending, that is for sure, Will. So, to many of my fellow Eurosceptics, this is an obvious source of irritation. None feel this more so than our erstwhile podcast star and ex-business secretary. When he spoke to me, he was clear about what a failure to get this legislation enacted would mean. He said, quote, this was part of embedding Brexit. He, he noted, this is, uh, if this is done, future governments will find it far more difficult to take us back in. So, first of all, A, I, I absolutely agree with what Jacob Rees-Mogg said. This is part of that. This is part of trying to deregulate the UK and to make any attempt at rejoining, be it a, a potential, let's just go for like, you know, single market membership or whatever, let's to rejoin like, you know, maybe the customs union or like just the customs union. You know, this is what it's all about to make it harder. And they know it. They know full well. They want to make it as hard as possible for any sort of walk back to sort of EU uh, alignment, even regulation, as hard as possible. That is his open intention, but it's also part to deregulate the country in a way that aligns with Jacob Rees-Mogg's and his other Eurosceptic values, because they want no regulation. So at least, to be honest, he's honest in one respect. So 
many of these laws were introduced without scrutiny. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> these laws were scrutinized. Not only were they scrutinized by the EU Parliament, which voted on them, which did the scrutiny, which had the committees. These were then brought to the UK Parliament where ministers and MPs got a vote on them. All this regulation was passed because, as we've said before, the vast majority of MPs agree with EU regulation. The problem is you have the core small, let's say what they are, they are a small Eurosceptic part, which are these free market libertarians who do not want any form of, of regulations whatsoever. So we we'll continue. This is an obvious source of, irrita of irritation. Non fearless, oh, oh sorry, no, I'm reading, reading that part again. Uh, where are we? Uh, so many of these words, we just asked, there we are. So Resmog highlighted to me how originally the number under consideration was 2,400 until more than a thousand more were essentially found down the back of the sofa at the National Archives. Wrong. Everyone who has said this and the other articles that we have looked through and gone through this have all said that these were there, that these were ones that were in plain sight. Rees-Mogg just didn't add them because he did not do enough scrutiny in this bill because the original intention of this bill was just to be an absolute wrecking ball and to kickstart this you know, this zero regulation uh, agenda that many of these free market libertarians in the Conservative Party, like Jacob Rees-Mogg is, have. Uh, back to it. So many are inactive and only serve the interest of protectionists. <laughs> For example, there are many regulations around chemicals uh, that companies uh, fought the introduction of, but now defend since they erect non-tariff barriers to companies outside of the EU. Repealing these would deliver a blow <laughs> to... Um, uh, repealing these would deliver a blow to the anti-growth coalition. How... <sighs> so, again, he's accusing... He's accusing these regulations of being protectionist. Absolutely not. We did a video of this last year. A lot of those regulations are to do with companies going, um, hey, we see you using this very, very toxic chemical. Um, can you not use that toxic chemical and maybe use a less toxic chemical that is less damaging to the environment because, you know, it's it's better for the environment. That's one of the regulations Rees Mogg and sort of Will here call protectionist. Also, another one would be that if a company is using dangerous chemicals, they have to notify the government to say, oh, yeah, by the way, um, we're using this, you know, quite hazardous toxic chemicals. Because in the past, whenever, let's say, there was a chemical spill or something like that, we'd have to go through huge investigations to find out where this spill came from and who did it, who was to blame for this spill. Now that when you have that regulation, let's say a spill happens or occurs and you find, well, oh, here's this chemical. Oh, so-and-so was using this chemical. They're the ones to blame. Now, of course, without this, and there is a chemical spill or anything like that, a company could just come back and go, wasn't us using that when they were potentially the ones to blame. Once again, as we've always said, when it comes to actually discussing the regulations, people like Will here are not being honest. Those regulations are not protectionist. They are protecting not only the environment, public health, and even public safety. And here's the thing, as you've said, 
now we're outside the EU and you repeal these barriers, more tariffs go up. That is, that is not a blow to the anti-growth coalition. That is a blow to the UK chemical industry that can no longer do business with its closest trading partner. That's, that's who it damages. Because if you look at our chemical industry, who is their number one customer? It's the EU. So, yeah, let's continue with this. So, moreover, with these laws left in the statute book, Labour would be able to make two arguments. First, that we had, quote, uh, truly not got Brexit done, and since we would still be living under a legal regime, we had voted to exit eight years before. Actually, again, um, the vote was to, quote, leave the EU. I do not remember at any point during that um, that referendum, there being a, a vote on these regulations. Because I remember, Will, at the time, to quote someone else who is on, I believe, uh, the staff of Conservative Home, maybe you should talk to him, Daniel Hanan, infamously said, when someone, when again, someone from the Remain side said, look, a vote to, to leave is a vote to leave the single market, Daniel Hanan instantly turned around and said, no, that is false. A vote to leave is not to leave the single market because only a fool would leave the single market. So according to you, according to lots of the literature, we were going to stay in the single market which means we would have absolutely have had to keep these regulations. So once again, you and your fellow Brexiteers are changing history, <laughs> as always, during the case of the Brexit vote. Brexit was about one thing until it was about something else, and it was about something else. Even now, that is still the case. Um, so back to it. Uh, da, 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 da. So uh, Starmer would also raise the specter of workplace and environmental regulations being scrapped, then threaten the safety of employees and our countryside. Yes, we've just talked about how damaging some of those chemical regulations that you call protectionist that are protecting workplace safety and the environment in regards to the chemical companies. So, no, that, he is entirely right to raise those spectres. But back to it. So only by giving these reform times to bed in could we allay such a scare stories and show the benefits of deregulation. Okay, benefits of deregulation do not necessarily mean that the workplace and the environmental safety is going to be good because you might not get a spill happen. Many of these companies, even though they want to continue trading with the EU, will have to continue to follow those EU rules and regulations. Not potentially all of them, but if they want to sort of, you know, uh, get a barrel of chemicals, you know, over the channel and sell it in the EU, they will have to follow certain rules and regulations. They won't have to follow all of them, of course. You know, the one like, you know, oh, you're producing a, a very dangerous, valuable, uh, dangerous, you know, chemical to, uh, you know, human health and environment. You don't have to inform the government you're making it. Which will make any potential investigation into a spill that much harder and that far more easy for them to sort of ob obfuscate any responsibility potentially there's always a reason behind regulation it's just these people who want deregulation never really want to talk about 
very often why these regulations exist in the first place and the fact that most regulations exist for a reason because someone did something in the past and they want to make sure it doesn't happen again. And most of those ones you're talking about, the chemicals, refer to potential spills or accidents that can harm not only the environment, but people's health and even cause death in some cases if people if this ends up getting to water or who knows. So you want to talk about the benefits of deregulation? That's that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. So back to it. The case of getting this legislation across the line is therefore strong. Absolutely not strong at all, Will, as we've just been discussing. The, quote, widening of the Remainer Lords or the stay-at-home civil servant can be written off as idle protests for those who are neither interested in making Brexit a success in the first place or who don't want the hassle of the work that implementing it will entail. If anything, they're going to have more work to do. We've already seen they're going to have to do a lot more work to try and figure out where these reforms are, not to mention potentially the thousands more that may exist. Uh, so where are we? Uh, Rees Mogg told me that he was informed a single civil servant would need to work on every individual law, a clearly ludicrous proposition within an entire year until the deadline. The thing is, Rees Mogg actively has taken away resources within the business department, his own department, to be able to work on these laws and legislations because he did not care. He wanted to get rid of as many of these legislations and as many of this regulation as possible. That was his goal. That was his true aim because he's a free market fundamentalist and a libertarian. He wants no regulation whatsoever. He wants the government completely removed from any market regulation. So, yeah, even as a former and fulsome supporter of Mogmentum, and with all my sympathy for the ex-Business uh, ex Secretary's desire to make Brexit an obviously worthwhile, it's really not, but there you go, uh, I think that a, quote, pausing or at least a slowing down of his bonfire of EU laws might not be a bad thing. Really? Hmm. After all that crowing about how amazing it would be, you're suddenly in favor of, of slowing down. I wonder why. Hmm. Since the referendum, it can, uh, if I can extend my analog further, many Brexiteers have been the besotted prince touring his kingdom with Cinderella's slipper. They are dogged in their pursuit of hard, hard evidence that they have found the, quote, sovereignty prize they seek, be it a blue passport or imperial measurements, a tangible example of our independence, our freedom and our ability to do things differently is what is desperately required to recognize the object of our affection. Um, wow. So bear in mind, this is, this is actually quite funny, this, because he is admitting that the Brexit benefits to him are blue passports and potentially bringing back imperial measurements. Wow. Um, I'm not impressed, to be honest. If that's, if that's your Brexit benefits, um, I'm not impressed. Six years, and that's all you've got to show for it. It's not really impressive, Will. It's not impressive at all. But back to it. Hence the enthusiasm for this bill. Certainly, it could be a, quote, big bang moment 
it will absolutely not be a Big Bang moment. It will unleash potential huge black holes in our laws and regulations and could cause all kinds of chaos. And not to mention the thousands of stories that would come out saying, well, this happened to this person, but oh, there used to be an EU law that protected against such thing. Why did the government remove it? Are you prepared to 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 go over those laws when when that happens? When those stories start appearing, will have you not even thought that far ahead? Because they will happen. That is a guaranteed fact. Those stories will happen. Um, so where are we? Uh, so it could be a big bang moment. Uh, where the dead hand of Brussels bureaucrats and their uh, dire diktats would be swept purposefully and permanently from our legal order. They weren't, they weren't that at all, but whatever, whatever, I'm not even going to bother to be honest addressing that. We've been going on for far too long already, to be honest. Um, yet a slower and steadier approach rather than a rush to, into a legal minefield, might be more prudent and electorally beneficial. At least he's being honest about that. Um, in 2018, the government decided that all existing e-laws should be copied and pasted into domestic law until Parliament had a chance to review, repeal, remove, or reform each piece properly. This made sense. If Brexit was about taking back control of our sovereignty and democracy, it is surely right that Parliament, rather than an unelected bureaucrat, again, that was wrong, they were, but never mind, an appointed official or government minister gets to decide what rules and regulations are. And yet, it, it, we, we, Jacob's bill was going to get rid of thousands without that. But okay. Yeah, as Daniel... Um, uh, Finkelstein, I think that's how you say it, pointed out in the Times this week, this bill would replace one form of executive overreach with another. Seeing legislation overturned, not because it was debated by MPs, but because ministers ran out of time. Moreover, for Rees Mogg to suggest that most of this legislation doesn't matter or is inactive is difficult to tarry with long-standing Eurosceptic arguments about, quote, Brussels interference being all-pervasive and damaging. Either these rules matter or they don't. And if they don't, why rush to remove them? That is exactly the point. This entire Eurosceptic argument about Brussels interference was pointless. These regulations were there for a reason. This is why whenever you have you see the Brexiteers when we talk about this, they don't really want to talk about regulation. You notice even in this article, Will saying about the chemical industry. He's not actually talking about what the regulations that we will. I've talked to you about some of them in this in this video. He just says, Oh, the protectionist. But we've heard that thousands of times of oh these these things are protectionist these things go on whatever it's not the case when you look at these regulations they make sense and if this is if they if these rules as is as, as your skeptics like to claim don't matter why is jacob in a rush to remove them and it's because first of all as he said, he wants to make it harder for any potential future government to rejoin, be it, you know, full EU membership, um, you know, single market and customs union membership, or just the customs union. He wants to make that even harder. That is his true aim, and he's not being honest about, <laughs> about the bill. At least he was honest with you, Will, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let that slide for the time being. So, the rush, as the ex-business secretary has pointed out, is uh, driven by the general election hurting towards us under two years' time. Yes, Johnson's stonking majority was one with the promise to get Brexit done. But I think the average voter in the Red Wall cares more about the NHS, surging bills, small boats, 
than they do about the exact regulatory environment chemicals currently chemical com, chemical companies currently face. Exactly. Well, I, I actually agree with you. The average voter really does not care about um, regulations, unfortunately, which is a real shame. Because if they did, um, we wouldn't have voted to leave the EU. That is for certain. The regulations are incredibly important and make up, to be honest, of any uh, sort of parliamentary democracy, not only just, you know, ours in America or wherever, most of those stuff going through parliament and, and those sort of you know, those institutions, not only in the UK, but around the world, are regulations. They take up a lot of time to, to do. And we have actually yet to see a regulatory bill pass through parliament yet. That will be interesting when that sort of first one uh, sort of does attempt to go through. But you are right that this is being driven by the need for a hurtling general election, potentially one even happening this year. And you are desperate to try and get it done because Jacob Rees-Mogg knows with every other <laughs> Tory MP they're probably going to lose the next general election. And they know that this is their best chance to try and achieve this libertarian dream that they've got. So that's for sure. That's he really his his true uh, ideal. It's it, it's it's their only chance because after this they are probably going to lose the next general election. Rick Jacob Rees Mogg knows it. Most of the Tory MPs knows it. So with all that in mind, a relaxation on the throttle might not be a bad thing. Again, I think Will is trying to sort of prepare the audience, or at least prepare Brexit voting conservatives for this um, for this deadline to be removed, and for their, uh, should we say, to temper their expectations. I think this is why he's really written this article to try and temper some expectation within the sort of wider conservative movement to say, oh, slow down a bit, guys, you know, <laughs> slow down. So one can wholeheartedly agree with the ex-business secretary's enthusiasm for tackling protectionism and showing the benefits of Brexit, whilst believing that doing so in a way that, ex uh, that expands arbitrary government power and creates considerable legal uncertainty might not be without flaws. Really? <laughs> you don't think that Jacob's bill was without flaws? The number of holes, the other regulations that, f that they found, considering that it was 2,000 originally, and then they found more. And as other experts have said, there is potentially even more out there that they just haven't found yet, that this bill could blow massive, massive black holes in laws, um, regulations, and who knows what else chaos this could cause. Because it is a poorly thought out bill, purely based in an ideological driven notion to basically try and remove the government completely from regulating the market. That is what Jacob's Bill is all about. So, thinking of the Red Wall, again, I, I don't think the Red Wall is going to vote for you this time, Will, but there you go. You, 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 you carry on thinking that. Um, a better approach might be to hold a, quote, strategic review of those uh, procurement rules that have often stood in the way of building hospitals here quickly. <laughs> Swing voters will be more grateful to a government that has cut uh, A&E waiting times by 2024 than has prioritised getting this bill across the line. Oh, oh well, um, yeah. Um, it's not EU procurement rules that are stopping hospitals being built. <laughs> that has nothing to do um, with these hospitals being built. Boris Johnson's big promise that he was going to build all these hospitals was a lie because he didn't want to give more money to these hospitals to get built or else, you know, they would have been built. <laughs> but certainly, um, yeah. So still, as we can see, as I've said 
time and time again when it comes to these Brexiteers talking about regulations. They are not honest. Will here is not honest in his in his presentation, certainly talking about the chemical industry and these protections, or at least for the environment and sort of public health and safety, which is why most of those regulations exist. And of course, you know, protecting workers working in those chemical industries. Again, something he hasn't pointed out as well, uh, because again, it mandates that, you know, the company must provide adequate protective materials and of course make sure that their workers are safe working with these sort of deadly chemicals again something else that i again forgot to mention when we're talking about some of those those bills like i say it quite needed some of these regulations because yeah um we've seen in other countries that don't have these these regulations where we see workers being exploited because they aren't given um the right protective equipment and of course accidents happen and does the company get blamed? No, because there's no regulation saying that they had to provide adequate protective equipment or that, you know, oh, there was a spill and they're trying to sort of cover it up. Again, we see this all the time happening in America, where there are chemical companies who work in America that have spills and they'll go out of their way to try and cover up the fact that it was their, they who caused the spill. Or we see companies who use these really toxic chemicals to the environment and public health. And we see, um, you know, someone who went swimming in a lake and, you know, the skin started bubbling and literally just peeling off. Or someone went to the to, to a tap or a spring that, that they knew had always been safe. And, oh, no, um, they've now died uh, because of that chemical poisoning. That happens all the time. And that's just in America. A company, a place that Will wants to replicate, and certainly Jacob Rees Mogg wants to love to replicate. <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. As, as always, like I say, um, Brexit is once again not being really honest about regulations. And certainly, I think the whole reason this article was even written in the first place, I think he's trying to measure his audience's expectation to say, oh, well, if this. Um, sunset clause gets removed well never mind but at least the bill was passed and of course as i said prepare will prepare yourself for the fact that there will be thousands of stories after of accidents situations and in the uh, article someone will say there used to be any regulation about this, but it, of course the government removed it because of your particular Jacob Rees Mogg sponsored bill. That's what's going to happen. That is what you are setting up. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page and an updated link called Buy Me Coffee. Where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much uh, to all those people who do help and support the channel. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.